Hello, Donna. Hello, Paul. What was it like growing up with that psychic ability as a child? Um, it was strange. Like I said to you earlier, I was four when I first saw Spirit. That obviously, now he's my guide, he works with me. And I, to be honest, Paul, I don't know any different. It's mm. something that I've grown up with mm. since I was four, and it's until this day, it's with me. Mm. And hopefully, it stays with me to the day I pass over. So what did happen at four? What, what did manifest with you? When I was laying in bed, and I see this man standing in my doorway. And obviously, as a child, it sort of scared me. Mm. And I remember getting up and running to my mum and dad's bedroom and saying, Mum, there's a man standing in my bedroom and they just put it down to like a childhood thing and go back to bed like they did. And it went on for weeks and weeks. And then my nan, um, which she was a psychic um, spiritualist lady and a healer, my mum called her in and she sat with me one evening and obviously it got later on later, she turned around and she'd see him as well. And she turned around and said to my mum, and now she'd see him. Mm. And it just went from there really and it just... So you inherited it? or the gift from your nan. I believe so. So what did your parents make out of all this? Um, my dad, funny enough, my dad, obviously his mum, she was the lady, yeah. the healer, and my dad never believed in it, and so he sort of poo-pooed it, really. Uh, my mum never knocked it, but um, she didn't understand why I was seeing it so early. Mm. And so it just, I don't know, it was just one of them things that happened. Can you describe this man you saw? Yeah, he was a, he was a tall guy. He must have been about six foot. I can still see his face now, and he had a dark, dark brown suit on, a bowler hat, and t I never see his face. Until this day, I've never seen his face. Mm. So It's unusual because we think of guides as being North American Indians or Buddhist monks, but you had a guide, or you still have a guide, yeah. who wears a bowler hat. Yeah. What, with a matching suit? To yeah, with a matching suit, a dark brown suit. There was mm. no cloak, it was just a... Uh, so, and what do you think he's here? What do you think he came for? Well, I just obviously being that young and having the gift, I think he was there. My nan's words to me: "He's there to protect you, mm. and he's, he's going to help you." And it was her words that always stuck into my head: mm. "He will never leave you, and he will stay with you to the day that you pass over," mm. which he has done so far. Now I know, and I've heard on many occasions that the gift of psychic ability in children. Um, disappears maybe at the age of 10 or 11 uh, when they go on to high school. Did that happen with you or did it stay with you? Um, they do say, like I said before, they're children, they can from a young age to seven, but no, mine stayed with me, but obviously going to school and with friends, you don't really want to turn around and say to these friends, oh I can see I, the feelings, I, only, I did that once, and because you don't want people to think, some people think, oh you're going mad, mm. and that's not the case. So yeah, you do put it to the side, mm. and then obviously as you get a little bit older and you sort of become wiser, and then you start bringing it back in again. So when did you learn that you were different to other children? From a very young age, always like, my mum and my dad and my mum and dad's friends mm. said I was a lovely child, but there was always something different about me. I knew I was different. I was I could be quite happy on my own mm. at home. I like even now I like my own company because I don't feel and that sounds quite but I don't feel on my own. No. I always feel there's someone with me mm. and it's just something that I've learned to live with mm. and moved on from there. So did you develop your gift for for that psychic ability or the mediumship ability by going to a spiritualist church? I didn't first go to a spiritualist church until I met my husband mm. and our little boy was, he's now 16, he was 18 months and then we went to a church. Um, as like I said, I, I wanted to go to get readings from people just to confirm to me that I wasn't going mad. Mm. And that's what I wanted. I mean, did you, did you begin seeing, then did you develop clear audience to listen, to hear? The first, as I say, when I first saw my guide, I saw... And then I got to the age of 11 and I, I kept, like I said, I, I had feelings I used to say to friends, oh, something's going to happen today. And then obviously working in the places that I worked, mm -hmm. I used to see. I never used to hear. Um, and it just, it just went on from there, Paul. It just moved on yeah. and on. And it is, even to this day, changing. You know, whereas I used to get a nan that come in and give me how she passed over, what she looked like before she passed over. But now what they're doing, they're giving me how they laid in their coffin right. when they're, before they shut the lid, God bless them. 
and then they're taking me back to how they looked when they were younger. Mm. So it's just hard evidence that's yeah. around them and giving to me to give to their loved ones that it is who definitely we talk about. I mean, you can get anyone in, can't you say, yeah. oh, that's a nan, that's a granddad, we've heard all this before. But when you give them what they look like, and then obviously this person's gone to see them at the chapel, what they're wearing, what they've put under the... I mean, I get a lot of what people have put under them before they shut the lid. Mm. It just It's changing constantly. Donna, tell me what happened when you worked at the old people's home. I'd only been there a couple of weeks, and I was on afternoon duty, and they said to me, can you take the teas upstairs? So I said, not a problem. So I had this gold tray with all the teas on them, and I know I had to go to certain rooms. Um, and as I got halfway upstairs, I see a lady standing there. And I know obviously being upstairs, they shouldn't have been out of bed. So I said, oh, darling, you shouldn't be out of bed. I said, I'll come and put you to bed. And there was a chairlift on the side, and it was down. So I put the gold tray on the chairlift, mm. and I'd gone to go and get her, and she just went straight through the really? middle wall. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I went downstairs, and I said to the matron at the time, I've just seen a lady, and I sort of described what she looked like. Then she said, is that the lady there on the pinball? There's a picture on the pinball. I went, that's such a nice Mary. She, she died in that room, and oh, she said she just walks around. Lovely, lovely lady. Do you ever get frightened by what you see? Never. Yeah. Never, ever. I absolutely love it. Yeah. As a child, um, with that psychic ability, you're continu continuously open, I should imagine, to the spirit world. Mm -hmm. But in, when you sat in a circle, were you taught how to shut off from the spirit world and open up when you make, want to make contact? They, they, the way that the lady that I went to see in, in an open and closed circle, um, I can't really I mean, remember going there, but she sort of taught you, the way that she taught the sister to open, it's not the way that I use now. Mm. My way is completely different because they have the, obviously the third eye and everything, they open everything up. I don't do that, mm. you know, so I do my own thing yeah. and I just sit, I open what I do when I start yeah. reading someone, I open my iron door yeah. and then when I finish someone, I shut my iron door and then that's me done. What would happen, Donna, if you didn't open yourself up or shut down? I've only ever done that once, Paul. I... I did a late reading from a lady in London and I didn't shut down properly and obviously I'd come in from where I'm working and I've gone to bed and I remember being asleep for about an hour and I had her dad standing there poking me in the face because he wanted to give her more messages mm. and it frightened me, it absolutely petrified me. Mm. Now Darren was in the room with me and I had sort of like a, I can call it like a mini panic attack because it never happened to me before. And what I'd actually done is that my guy told me I hadn't closed down properly. Instead of coming in, sitting down, relaxing, mm -hmm. I'd gone straight to bed. You know, but that's the only time yeah. it's ever happened. Right. Is there one message from someone who's passed over that has stuck in your mind? Um, I did a night in Portugal. I did a show in Portugal um, two or three weeks ago. And there was a lady there that really wanted a message from her son. Now this is going back 20 years ago. He was five months old when he passed over. And she just wanted a message for him. And he come through. And what he described, what she'd done to him. He was obviously a baby in a coffin. She tucked a little blue with a lace top around his neck. And she said, even though I knew he wasn't you know, obviously going to feel that, but that was a motherly instinct and he showed me that. And she said to me, I just want his name. All I want is his name, if you can give me his name. I said, well, hang on. We went on doing it did a little bit and then as I turned around a little boy just come running in front of me, he looked at me and went, hello, I'm Sam and run off. I said, oh, it's Sam, darling. Yeah. It's Sam and she just, it was lovely. And that, just to see her face and she, yeah. the comfort that I got from that, knowing that my baby is still with me, even though it's 20 years ago, yeah. she is better than when the loss of me and that gave me a oh, fantastic feeling. Absolutely fantastic. When did you decide that um, you could work with your gift? Um, obviously, I've like, gone along in life and I see things and I do things. I've been working now about three years. I call it working. It's not. It's helping other people. Mm. Um, I just went from there. It was one particular day, it was it was funny enough that the house that we live in has got an old man that walks around and shuffles around after me. And I was speaking to the young girl that work, um, that lived there. And she said to me, oh, there's, you know there's something in here. And I said, yeah. I said, describe it to me. And so she did. And um, it's from her, really. She said, oh, can you give me a reading? Mm. And I went through a bad time in my life about five years ago. And I, I just I knew I wasn't ready. And then it went on. 
and she please give me a reading. I said, I can't. I just didn't feel ready to pursue it anymore. And then I just did one day. Mm. I just did, and I didn't do it. In, I just done it in my lounge, yeah. and it just went from there, and it's gone on and on and on. And so once they start getting you working, there's no stopping them. Well, there's no stopping you now because you do one-to-one -one readings. Mm -hmm. You work in like big halls. Yeah. Venues. You do psychic parties. I do. What's next for Donna Mowell? I'd love to do a theatre. Mm. I'd love to do a charity night for theatre mm. in the theatre. Mm. But it's just getting doing it, isn't it? Yeah. There is chats at the moment about doing this, but uh -huh. obviously it's still under wraps at the moment. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. For those watching us now who want to find out a bit more about you, Donna. Okay. What's your website address? It's www.psychicmediumdonna.co.uk right. And they can find out a bit more history about you? And you can, it's all on there, all about me, all the venues where I work at, the charity nights that we do, everything that you need to know is on there. Right. Now, also, for those who want to become involved in mediumship mm -hmm. or, or want to gain that psychic ability, because I do believe it's, in, it's innate in all of us, yeah. so I believe, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? I would say go to your nearest spiritualist church mm. and then from them, they, most spiritualist churches do circles and they can invite you from there or there's people in the churches that do their own circles mm. and it just goes on from there. That's mm. what I would advise to go and do. Mm. So. You have children, Donna. I have. Now you are, as we said, naturally gifted psychic. Mm -hmm. Have your children shown signs of that gift as well? My oldest boy did. Um, when we lived at our old place, he was about 18, not 18 months old, going on to two and a half, and he said to me one day, Mummy's ladies, in their words, Mummy, lady on my bed. <laughs> and I said, well, just ask her to go, darling. And he, he said, off my bed, and she went. And it was a lady that passed away in the bungalow, and her name was Rita. But he got to the age of seven, and it disappeared, and he, he hasn't oh, really seen anything. You know, since then, really. Oh, so it disappeared for him, but yeah. as a child with you, yeah. it carried on. Yeah, that's it. It's different. But hopefully, I mean, they say you can progress as they get older, mm. but I can't see it with him at the moment. You can't. No, I can't. Mm. No, not at all. Okay. Well, Donna, I wish you well for your future. Thank you. And I hope you get in the theatres. Thank you. I hope so. And spreading the word of eternal life. Lovely. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Lovely. Thank you for Thank inviting you. me, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for watching another episode of the Eternal Sphere television show.